So if some of you have been seeing my posts about mushrooms on Instagram, I know a number of you have been really curious and you could see that there is still a real flush of mushrooms back here. And everybody was asking, well, how did that happen? You really don't have to do much in order to be able to grow these mushrooms. So I'm gonna teach you today about how to inoculate your soil with mushrooms and why that's important. I actually inoculated, it's called inoculated the soil with King Stropharia mushrooms. You could see when they're smaller, they look a little redder. They look like this. So they have this really beautiful wine cap and sometimes they're called wine cap mushrooms. And these are edible. Now I'm going to eat these mushrooms, but just so you know, if mushrooms could be really deadly and it can also make people very sick. So you wanna make sure that you know what mushroom you're eating. So I wouldn't advocate this for somebody who is a mushroom novice. Um, and I already know that I inoculated the soil with King Stropharia mushrooms. So these are edible and um, they are really good eating. They're actually like a cross between a potato with a little bit of a walnut aftertaste, which is just so good. And when I came out after the rain, and saw this flush of mushrooms, I was so ecstatic. I was so happy because um, this is a really good harvest. And I wanted to create a little bit more of a food forest back here, not only just for wildlife, but for humans. Got the soil tested and saw that the soil was nearly perfect. We had some good wood chips that were provided by Green Thumb NYC. And mushrooms have always been important for the environment. Actually, mushrooms and fungi predated plants. So plants are very reliant on mushrooms. And it wasn't until probably like, I would say almost 20 years ago now, that people started to realize how much the uh, fungus in all across the world is actually important to the health of plants. And part of the symbiosis or the connection that plants and fungus have together is happening underneath the soil. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about that. Because fungus aren't plants, they don't really have roots, but they have this kind of mycorrhizae, which is this kind of like white filamentous fiber that festoons itself between the fungal fruiting body, which is this, which is how we know fungus. It's this fruiting body that kind of pops up. But all of this biomass underneath the soil is actually the fungus as well. It just is not fruiting. And this, because it's not a green plant, needs other types of nutrients. So those nutrients are then being transferred between the plant root, giving the fungus carbohydrates, and the fungus is in symbiosis with the plant, actually providing and shuttling nutrients to the plant, and nutrients that are often not really bioavailable to the plant. So there is this like really nice, unique connection that's happening between the fungus and the plants in, the, in, in an ecosystem. And we're here in the Northeast United States and mushrooms are so common here. I mean, I grew up in Northeastern Pennsylvania, which is known as like, it's kind of like the fungus capital of the United States because there's so much great fungus. And I just remember going in the woods as a kid, collecting fungus and identifying which ones were edible and not edible. And again, if you ever have any type of uh, second guessing, don't eat the mushroom. I always err on the side of, of caution and, and being precautious. Here, you can see a little fruiting body just coming up out of here of this King Stropharia mushroom. You can see how small they are, which is super cool. So basically how I inoculated this soil was that there was just a fresh layer of soil that we put on the ground in addition to the fact that this soil has been building up for about 25 years and has never been tilled. Um, for those 25 years. So it was just kind of like leaves falling on the ground, building up this soil and turned out it was really healthy. Then we, I took the spores of King Stropharia and you can actually buy sawdust spawn or spores, it's called sp spawn, which is like spores in sawdust online. So you could get them from North Spore, you can get them Smugtown Mushrooms. There's a bunch of others that actually sell this stuff and you spread it on wood chips. So basically, I had the wood chips spread out onto the soil. And you could also do with like cardboard or like butcher paper because that is actually what the mushrooms eat. They eat the wood chips and the cardboard or anything along those lines. And you just spread it. 
And you could see that I spread it all over the place. And these, the spores eventually form this mycorrhizae, which is that white filamentous fibers that you saw in the soil. And you could see, if I even dig down with my hand, you could see all this sawdust spawn and this mycorrhizae. I mean, look at all of this life in the soil. Like that is just full of life right there. And the soil didn't have that. I mean, it was a really healthy soil and you could see earthworms, but now there's this other biodiverse layer of, of life that is going to be helping a lot of these trees and plants that I planted back here, which are really shade tolerant plants because these are plants that you often see growing in the understory of, um, of woods. And uh, so anyway, so this is basically how you inoculate soil. It's super easy. And then you basically wait for rain. And it's been such a rainy spring here in New York that I've just been getting flush after flush of these mushrooms. So I've been having King Stropharia on my dinner plate now for probably a month to a month and a half. And um, you probably won't get a flush in summer because it doesn't really rain as much in the summer months. So spring is a really good time to harvest mushrooms. And uh, the second most popular time, actually probably the first most popular time to, to collect mushrooms is in fall and then also in spring because you get that kind of like wet, moist season, which fungus absolutely love. Otherwise, they lay dormant underneath the soil surface, staying you know, nice and cool and wet. So um, I'm really excited. I'd love to actually inoculate more. This particular fungus actually grows really well on wood chips, but they don't always grow well on wood chips. Like for instance, turkey tail and woodier mushrooms, they grow better on hardwood. So you have to actually inoculate hardwood or spores in hardwood. Same thing with shiitake. They get hardwood totems and they drill some holes in there and they actually inoculate those holes with a bunch of spawn. So you have to kind of observe where those mushrooms grow. Are they growing on the forest floor? Are they actually growing on specific trees? And then you provide that habitat for those mushrooms and then you collect them. So I don't have my sawdust spawn here, but I'll basically take you through how I would spread it. But you could see that this is all wood chips and this is what the fungus is going to want to eat. This is where the mycorrhizae right here that you could see is very, po it's populating all of this wood. So you're going to want to basically spread a thin layer of wood chips on the ground, spread the spawn, which again is just basically sawdust. You're not really going to see the spores. It's sawdust and spores. You just have to trust that they're there. Spread that on the wood chips, or if you have butcher paper or even cardboard, you could spread that down, put the spawn on top of it, and then you put another inch to two inches of wood chips on top of that. You basically are creating a sawdust spawn sandwich. So you have either wood chips or butcher paper or cardboard below. You have the sawdust spawn in the middle and then you have more wood chips on top. And the reason for that is that you don't wanna leave just sawdust spawn on the top of the, the surficial layer because if you get a heavy wind or you get a heavy rain that will just kind of wash off. So really the wood chips kind of keep the, the spawn in and also maintains that moisture because mushrooms need moisture. They, they need to be in a cool, damp area, much in the same way that like moss needs to be in a cool, damp area. You don't often see mushrooms growing in the blistering sun or in the deserts, which is why this area, the area that I grew up in in Northeastern Pennsylvania is such a popular area for mushrooms, particularly in the spring and fall because those are the rainier months. In the summer, you rarely see any types of mushrooms growing up unless it's, you know, it happens to be a cool, wet summer. So all of these mushrooms here are completely edible. Some of them I would say are past their prime. I would definitely harvest them when they're looking a little bit more like this, which I already took a notch out of there because I've been eating it. But um, this is a perfect one to harvest. And you could actually cut this section off, this little stem or this stalk, and just leave it on the ground and this will actually just repopulate or you could take pieces of this break it up put it in moist wet cardboard in a plastic bag in like a you know ziploc bag in your home wrap it up in cardboard and even a wet paper towel 
keep that moisture in there and you'll start to see little bits of mycorrhizae form because it'll start to eat that cardboard that you have there and you could then inoculate your soil with that. So you could see that mushrooms are just so giving. They just like populate on the ready and you don't even have to, once you inoculate the soil, it'll just keep on coming back up and up provided that you still have your wood chips because if you don't have your wood chips, it's not going to really eat the soil. Um, there's not gonna be really too much in the soil for them to eat. You wanna cr um, create this like where it's like fallen wood, wood chips, even laying out some butcher paper or some cardboard a little bit more. Here you could see like a young King Stropharia coming up right here. Now I would probably harvest this when it's a little bit bigger just because you, that's not going to give you too much of a mushroom, but I found them to be very tasty when they're quite small. When they're a little bit larger, they get a little bit too dry to the taste, um, almost a little bit too powdery and it's not good. But it's down here, which is the most interesting. And you could see all the like root systems down here. Even you can even see a little beetle grub down here too. But this is the most interesting part and it is creating this ecosystem, this intact ecosystem down below to really help all the little the plant roots around here. So these blueberries, this raspberry, this um, dogwood, this cornice that I planted, all of these plants back here are going to be benefiting from these mushrooms, even if we can't see it happening.